Welcome back, Seahawks. Video 12, Part C. Tricky little video. What we need to do is we need to link normal models all the way back to z-scores. We did z-scores in less than four when we were describing how many standard deviations that a data value is away from the mean. Those ideas translate nicely to normal models, and so let's take a look at that. Remember from previous lessons what a z-score is. It's the number of standard deviations a value lies away from the mean. Like I said, this translates nicely to normal models. When we're working with data, circle, make sure we know this is data this time because we're going to switch it to models just below. What the heck was the z-score formula? So z equals did this before let's see we take our data value that we're interested in we subtract off the mean and we divide by the standard deviation okay so that's that's in words take your data value subtract off the mean tells you how far away you are from the mean above or below and when we divide by standard deviations it, it changes the units to standard deviations with data the formula looks like this we'll call it y minus y bar and that gets divided by s and that there is the formula for working with data values okay now we're doing normal models the idea is the same i still will take my data value i'll still subtract the mean i'll still divide that by the standard deviation it's just that the symbols have changed if you go down to the next one Here's the z-score formula for when you are working with a normal model, or in fact any model, but we're working normal models in this unit. So this is y minus mu divided by sigma. I'll leave this here. You can rewrite it if you choose. Just remember it's the idea that's the same. Okay. So y minus mu, pop that over sigma, and we can do z-scores again. Let's practice. These are easy questions. I don't, where's A there? Uh-oh. We're missing A. All right, well, IQ scores, I think you have it in front of you. IQ scores are well modeled by that normal model with a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. Part A, what is the z-score? for someone with an IQ of 83, and is that unusually below average? So remember we're doing A here. Um, what is the z-score? The formula, again, is z equals y minus mu over sigma. And the question says, what's the z-score for somebody with an IQ of 83? We'll take 83. We will subtract off the average IQ, the means 100. We will divide by 15. That will translate it to a z-score. Uh, just I'll do one little. So this is negative 17 over 15. It's negative because this IQ score is below average. It's okay to get a negative z-score. Don't make it positive thinking you made a mistake. If you divide that out, you get a negative 1.13. And so that person's IQ is 1.13 standard deviations below the mean. Is that unusual? We're still in part A. Is that unusually below average? No. This is not unusually low. If we did the z-score and it was a negative 2 point something, negative 3 point something, then yes, we are getting unusually below average. But in this case, this is not unusually low. It is below average. But not that much below average. Okay, now we'll move on to B. Let's see here. Your girlfriend has an IQ of, uh, with a Z-score of 2.80. Claims to be a genius, is she? What's her IQ? Oh. I guess if she's reporting her IQ and Z-scores, there must be something there at least, right? Um, we can go backwards, calculate her IQ. The one thing, I mean, this is, this is definitely unusually high just by, based on the z-score. Right, it's in between positive 2 and positive 3, so it's unusually high. Is she a genius? 
there are a number of different definitions for what's a genius IQ, but um, it's definitely unusually high. It's close to rare, right? If it was three, it'd be rare or very unusual. So unusually high, she might be onto something here. I've heard, uh, I've heard IQs of 160 and above are genius, 145, 140, it's, everybody sort of has a different definition. We can go backwards. So here's the formula, Z equals Y minus mu over sigma. I believe we do know the Z score this time. We know the mean and we know the standard deviation. So we just have to use a little bit of algebra. We can solve for Y and, and we did this back in lesson four. So if I plug and chuck the numbers here, we'll do a 2.80 equals y minus 100 over 15. This algebra is a piece of cake, right? So I just multiply both sides by 15. I add 100 to both sides, and we will get, let's see, looks like a 142. y equals 142. P.S. That's an IQ score, right? We've translated from Z back to the original units, which are in IQs. So that's her IQ, and whether or not she's a genius, I guess, depends on your definition. Um, all right, we'll flip to the next page. Here comes some important stuff. Standard normal model. Every normal model, the normal model that deals with IQ scores, can be related back to the standard normal model. The IQ scores that models women's heights, that's centered at about five foot four, with a standard deviation of about three inches, can be related back to the standard normal model. In fact, any normal model, you can sort of convert it over to standard normal. So it's super important, okay? There are an infinite number of normal models. Because normal models are defined by the value of their mean, which could be anything, any number at all could be the mean, and their standard deviation, those are the two parameters. Standard deviation is a measure of spread, so it has to be positive, can't be negative. There are an unlimited number of possibilities. Okay, So, let's just to sort of illustrate this. If we look at the general population, IQ scores are believed to be centered at 100. Um, with a standard deviation of 15. If we went to Harvard University, do you think a different normal model might describe the behavior of IQ scores? I mean, I don't know, but I just made this up. Maybe the IQ, the average IQ at Harvard is 105, right? And there's less spread, there's less variation of IQ scores. Um, maybe a standard deviation of 10. This is just, these are two different normal models. If you drew the curve, they'd be centered at different places with slightly different spreads. Right? You'd have to collect data to find out what the deal is up at Harvard, but it's certainly a different normal model. Um, in America, women's heights are often modeled with a normal model, mean of 64, standard deviation 2.3. Okay? Men's heights in America are often modeled with a normal model, mean of 70, it's about 5 foot 10, standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Okay? If you went to Japan, maybe different normal models are appropriate. Right? So what we're trying to illustrate here is that there are just an infinite number of normal models. All of them can be related back to the standard normal model. One, this must be the easiest fill in the blank ever. Yeah, well, here, right? Sometimes I wonder about myself when I'm writing these notes. One very, well, the most important normal model is the standard normal model, okay? And one way to think about this, here's where we link back to z-scores. The standard normal model is the normal model for z-scores. Like I've said, we can take any normal model, the model for women's heights, men's heights, IQ scores here, IQ scores at Harvard, they can all be standardized. They can all be converted to z-score normal model. So any normal model can be standardized. 
Here's where we link z scores. We say, oh, what's an unusual IQ score on the high side? That'd be two standard deviations, right? So if the mean IQ is 100, I would jump up two standard deviations up to 130. Now we're thinking in terms of z scores, but I can go from 130 to a z score of positive two, and I can sort of think of those simultaneously. All right? We'll hammer home this IQ score model. So here, take for example the IQ normal model and convert the values to z-scores. We've now converted the normal model with a mean of 100 to a normal model. Remember, this is the mean. What's the average z-score? The average z-score is zero. IQ scores have a standard deviation of 15. What's the standard deviation of z-scores? It's always one. Okay, That's the standard normal model. This one right here, normal, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. All right, so for any data set, any model, you fill in the blank here, the mean of the z-scores is always equal to zero, and therefore the mean of the standard normal model is zero. It's up there in the box, okay, mean comes first. For any data set, any model, next one, the standard deviation of the z-scores is always equal to one. So the standard deviation of the standard normal model is always equal to one. Probably comes right next, but there it is. That's the standard normal model, normal zero comma one. To wrap up this video, we'll draw the standard normal model, and this is the one that you should understand basically what's going on. On the horizontal axis, we have z-scores, all right? So here's horizontal axis, and draw that normal model there. This is the normal model, zero comma one. For even more shorthand, sometimes they just call that the z-curve for z-scores. We know smack dab in the middle that the mean of that model is zero. On this horizontal axis, these are z-scores down here. The empirical rule still stands. If I jump out one standard deviation, so if I go out to here maybe, this would be a z-score of plus one. If I jump down one standard deviation here, this is a z-score of negative one. And you remember how much area goes in the center, right? Hopefully, 68%. I won't put the 68. I'm going to carve this up. I'm going to partition it. But let me get the other tick marks on here. So here's a z-score of negative two. That's two standard deviations below the mean. Here is a z-score of negative three. Going up, here's plus one, here's a plus two, here is a plus three. These are z-scores. If I was thinking IQ scores, this would be 100. 115, 130, 145, right? You can go back and forth. 85, 70, 55, but these are just the z-scores. All right. So we draw a line in the center. We're going to try to cement these numbers in your head. Um, we know 68% is here, so this will be chopped up evenly. 34 and 34. I'll keep my picture cleaner. Maybe you want to put 68 here at the bottom or something. Um, 95 is plus or minus 2. So the remainder, if we subtract out the middle, um, we do get 13.5% and 13.5%. And Those four added up will take us to 95%. We've got five left over all together. This piece is the 2.35%, and that leaves us with 0.15% up there in the upper tail. So we've seen this in the previous video, and you're starting to memorize the numbers just by sheer repetition. Okay, so the picture looks exactly the same. Only thing that changed was the labeling down here on the horizontal. I'll make one final comment about the rareness. If I'm down here, say negative three standard deviations or even more, I just want to put one thing here. 
0.15% is about one and a half out of a thousand people would be at three standard deviations or below the mean, just say IQ scores or heights or whatever we're thinking of. That's only one and a half out of a thousand. That's where that word rare comes from, right? It's pretty unusual. In the upper tail down there, I won't write it, but if you're more than three standard deviations above the mean, on the high side, again, another one and a half out of a thousand people, okay? So, we'll wrap up there with this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.